Hello and welcome back everybody to lesson four in this FS Academy Navigator series. Today's lesson, blown away. Today we're gonna to learn about wind drift and see how that affects when we travel. So let's jump in. at the southern end of Fuerteventura, one of the Canary Islands. The Canaries are a series of mostly volcanic islands situated around 100 kilometers off the west coast of Africa, out in the Atlantic Ocean. It's common to have strong winds across the Canaries, which is where Fuerteventura gets its name. Up until now, we have been flying in very light wind conditions, but today we find ourselves with a strong 30 knots wind from the west. As we continue to fly north, the wind is blowing from our left, meaning it is pushing us to the right of course. The direction we point the aeroplane's nose is called our heading, whereas the path we cover over the ground is our track. The difference between our heading and track is a result of the wind and is known as our drift angle. How much drift we can expect is based on the speed and direction of our aircraft and the speed and direction of the wind. Wind is always reported with reference to the direction from which it blows. This wind is blowing from the west, which is 270 on the compass, with a speed of 30 knots. Therefore, it is reported as 270 at 30. Our ground speed is the speed at which we cover the ground below us, and it depends on if the wind is acting as a headwind or a tailwind. As the wind is currently fully to our left, it is not affecting our ground speed, as there is neither a headwind nor tailwind component. This means that as we are flying at 100 knots indicated airspeed, we can expect our ground speed to also be 100 knots. As we climb higher and the air becomes thinner, our ground speed will become greater than our indicated airspeed, but for now we will consider them to be equal. Now please make a turn directly into wind onto heading 270. 270. Now we are facing directly into the wind, meaning we have a 30 knots headwind. This means that although our indicated airspeed remains the same at 100 knots, we are now fighting against 30 knots of headwind, so our ground speed will be just 70 knots. This will slow our progress, and so we would account for this when planning a flight, in order to get accurate leg timings. Note that in aerodynamic terms, the aircraft itself is only interested in indicated airspeed, so the aircraft handles and behaves exactly the same regardless of our ground speed. In fact, we could now be flying into a 100 knots headwind, fully cancelling out our 100 knots airspeed, giving a ground speed of zero. We will be hovering over the ground, making no forward progress, but the aircraft would still fly just as it is now, as there is still a hundred knots of air going over the wings. Please now reduce our airspeed to 60 knots. Okay, you need to keep uh, the altitude. get back on the west heading oh no 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 great now holds us at 60 knots now that we are flying at an indicated airspeed of 60 knots 
our 30 knots headwind component results in a ground speed of just 30 knots, which would result in some pretty slow progress. In order to account for the effects of drift, we need to work out our crosswind component, which is what proportion of the wind has an effect as a sideways force. As the wind is now blowing from directly in front of the nose, we are not experiencing any drift, so both our heading and track are equal at 270. We have a headwind component of the full 30 knots, but zero crosswind component and therefore zero drift angle. Please now make a left turn onto heading 210. If flying with a heading that is 60 degrees or greater from the wind direction, as we are doing now, we consider the wind to be a full crosswind and take 100% of the wind speed as the crosswind component. As the wind is from 270 at 30 and our heading is 60 degrees to the left of 270, we have a full 30 knot crosswind component pushing us to the left. When flying at 60 knots, a 30 knot crosswind component gives 30 degrees of drift angle. So at the moment on heading 210 and a left drift angle of 30 degrees, our track is 180. If the wind speed was 15 knots rather than 30, we would have a drift angle of 15 degrees, resulting in track 195. Now please make a turn to the right onto heading 240. On to the right, 240. Notice when turning our indicated airspeed can fluctuate as yep. the nose gets turned in or out of the wind direction, making speed holding more challenging. The calculation for crosswind component can be simplified by using a system much like the minutes that make up an hour on a clock face. 60 minutes make up a full hour, in the same way that 60 degrees of heading difference to the wind direction gives the full crosswind component. 30 minutes is half an hour, so using our clock analogy, 30 degrees of heading would give half the crosswind component. 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, so 15 degrees heading gives a quarter crosswind component. This is a quick rule of thumb that gives a good estimation of drift angle and is relatively easy to use in flight. Right now we're on heading 240, which is 30 degrees left of the 270 wind direction. 30 degrees means half the crosswind component, so our crosswind component is half the 30 knots wind speed, which is 15 knots. Therefore, a 15 knots crosswind component, while we fly at 60 knots indicated airspeed, gives 15 degrees of drift angle. Please now make a left turn to heading 180. Please keep us at 60 knots for now. We are now on heading 180, which is greater than 60 degrees from the wind direction. So we again apply all of the wind speed, resulting in a 30 knots crosswind component and therefore a 30 degree drift angle. The other factor to consider when estimating our drift angle is our speed. <laughs> Having Increasing a hard time keeping this thing steady at 60, speed, 60 knots. At 60 knots, a crosswind component of 30 knots results in a 30 degree drift angle. But if we double our speed to 120 knots, the crosswind component only has half the effect, resulting in a 15 degree drift angle. Let's now accelerate back up to 100 knots. Oh, thank goodness. Doubling our speed to 120 knots is a little ambitious in our 152, 
but we are now at 100 knots, which gives a rough estimation. Although our heading remains unchanged at heading 180, we have nearly doubled our speed, so our drift angle has nearly halved. Our 30 knots crosswind component now results in roughly a 15 degree drift angle. This is part of the reason why flying on route requires accurate speed control, as flying at an incorrect speed not only affects our timings, but also our track. Let's say that the track we need to fly to our next waypoint is track 330. 330 is 60 degrees to the right of the wind direction, so we would apply the full 30 knots as a crosswind component. At this speed, a 30 knots component will give about 15 degrees of drift. So to fly a track 330, we would turn to heading 315. Please make a turn to heading 315 now. All right, 315. Great, this heading 315 results in a track 330. Next, we'll look at flying longer legs between waypoints and apply what you have learned by introducing wind into the equation. All right, folks, let's uh, talk about this lesson. Um, to be honest with you, even though I read it a couple times, some of the concepts were still a little foggy to me. I didn't get that Arby's moment. Um, and I took a lot of time paying, I paid more attention trying to stay on heading and altitude and speed than I did listening to him. So this was a very stressful lesson, I guess. Some of you will probably get it a lot better than I did. So kudos to you for that. Um, I will keep trying. All right, until next time.